Good morning and welcome to today's class, Layering Heat Transfer Vinyl, A Guide to Success. I'm Josh Ellsworth with Stalls TV and I'll be spending the next 45 minutes with you giving you tips and tricks for layering heat transfer films, not only at the heat press, but also some tips in the design process. The goal here is that you would feel completely confident layering not only like style materials, but mixing different materials together and being able to do it with consistency accuracy and producing quality results that can help to grow your business. So I've personally been working with heat transfer films for the better part of 15 years in my career here at Stalls, and throughout that course of time we've created plenty of different samples and projects that included layering different heat transfer films. So if you've already made mistakes layering products, uh, no doubt I have along the way as well but hopefully I can share some of those mistakes with you and give you best practices and ideas so you can do this effectively and reduce waste and errors in your business. And so it looked like the majority of our audience attending live today has layered heat transfer materials before that we launched in the GoToWebinar poll. So about 70% of you already understand the basics of layering. So I hope you'll bear with me in the first five or 10 minutes of the class as we give some tips to those that have not layered products before. And then as we progress throughout, we'll sort of start with basic and we'll advance um, to more complex techniques and tips for layering materials. As always, this is Stalls TV, it's live. So if you have questions, we have Karen here with us uh, working the computer. She'll, be, she'll make sure to answer your questions that you can type into the GoToWebinar box or at some point in the, the process, I'll stop and try to answer those live as well if there's anything that we feel the group would benefit from. Um, so to start things off, I want to start with the basics of layering. And if we can go to my computer screen, I want to share with you um, sort of some information when it comes to layering heat transfer materials. As you may know, Stalls manufactures heat transfer films, and we carry a large variety of styles. And on our website, stalls.com, you can access all of the different CAD cut heat transfer materials. We actually invented this category of product over 20 years ago. Um, the first material that could be vinyl cut um, and heat applied. The reason I'm pointing out the product page on the website um, is so you can look first at composition. So regardless of what heat transfer film you're using, you want to understand the composition of that film to know the basic principle of what does it comprise that because that dictates whether it can be layered or not. So as you'll see on the Stahl's web pages, you'll see composition, polyurethane, you'll see a little PU um, as well. Uh, different materials will say PU based. No, that if your material that you're using is polyurethane, it typically layers very well. That means I can combine it with other polyurethane materials and have a high rate of success. Now where you get into a jam is if the composition of your heat transfer film is PVC. Typically PVC, which stands for polyvinyl chloride, does not layer very well at all and you have issues where the top layer is washing off of the bottom layer. Um, typically those folks selling PVC materials won't advertise them as such because it's a nasty material and not even good for decorating children's apparel uh, 12 and under in the US market where we have government legislation that requires the, the material that may come in contact with the mouth not to have lead and phthalates. So if you're using a PVC based material already um, a dead giveaway is it'll be a cheap, really inexpensive, cheap price. Um, that's because it's not safe for kids, it's not good for layering, there's typically a lot of trade-offs when you're working. So now, understanding that you have a uh, polyurethane base material, I want to show you um, the basic concepts uh, in software that will help you with layering. Um, of course, I'm assuming your vinyl cutting designs when you're layering heat transfer films or you could order them pre-cut from stalls. But it's very helpful if you're going to do a lot of multicolor work. If you have a cutter driver, the software that it actually sends to your cutter that can recognize uh, color in your cut lines. So, for instance, when you design in your design software, in this case, I've designed the following uh, design in CADWorksLive.com, which is a software we give you for free and we uh, give all kinds of tutorial videos on StallsTV.com. But this was a three color design. So you'll see when I bring it into from CADWorks over to VectorCut, it maintains the colors. And VectorCut is a portion of CADWorks that you can download. Um, if you just go to CADWorksLive.com, I'll bring it up here for you. Um, basically, after you log in, you can go into the downloads and 
download vector cut. It will download to your local unit and it's a cut driver for sending over to your vinyl cutter and it supports GraphTech, Roland, um, a host of cutters that you can cut from. But notice this is real key because otherwise if this were one color image I'd have to break this apart and try to understand the colors. With vector cut it understands your um, layers and I can simply click on the color selection almost like I'm dealing with layers in Illustrator and pick the particular color that I want to cut and ultimately make the best utilization of not only the material but my time. And so if I want to cut the pink material that's loaded in the cutter, it's very simple. I can auto origin it. I can make my multiple copies just of the pink layer so I maximize my material. That keeps things quick and easy. So tip number one is make sure your cutter driver can cut by color. That will make your life so much easier when you're layering or creating multicolor designs. Now, with that understanding of the polyurethane base material, um, making it generally compatible and a cut driver that's going to make your life easier, I want to take you over to um, software and give you the basic fundamentals of creating a layered design. So I'm going to zoom to fit this particular portion. We'll get to the others later. Um, there is a function on text or a design element called a contour in most graphic design softwares. If you're working with a vector design software such as CADWorks, which I'm showing here, or CorelDRAW or Illustrator, it may be called Contour, could be called Offset. But the point is, one of the rookie mistakes with layering is you can't just make a duplicate of your design. Some people will try to duplicate their text, they'll try to change its colors, and then they'll try to size it up as a background. That's going to be miserable and it will never line up quite right um, for your outline. And so for that reason, you need to make sure you have a software that will allow you to create an offset or a contour. In CADWorks, it's pretty easy. I just click on the element, in this case the text, that I want to add an outline to. I'll click on Add Effect, and then I will apply a small contour, which is a quick command in CADWorks, and there's tutorial videos about this software on Stalls TV. I won't have time to go too in-depth with it today. And you can see, as I start to, let's make this a quarter inch so we can get a better visual on the outline, you can see that it gives you a full outline on that text. That's called a contour. Basically, it expands the cut path beyond the outside of your pre-existing design, and that's what gives you the full layer. Now, if when I break this apart by colors, you'll see when I drag this away, I have full layer on layer. Basically, I'm going to cut the blue material, and I'm going to layer the black material directly over. Um, as I mentioned, uh, layering, if it's a polyurethane base, can be uh, fairly simple and I can go full layer on layer without any um, special consideration. So we've went ahead to save time and pre-cut a design out of uh, fashion film material, which is one of our most popular materials uh, that we have out there for t-shirt graphics, etc. And I'll show you how that's applied in a second, but I understand there's some questions coming in already, so let's turn over to those. For someone who's starting a new business, what's the best way to get CADWorks live for everyone that does designs? For everyone that does design, I'm not sure I understand completely, but to get CADWorks live, you just go to cadworkslive.com, you sign up for a free account, as long as you're a customer of Stalls, you have access uh, to this software and you can design in it. Um, you can ultimately use the vector cut to send to your cutter, or you can simply design and then export as a JPEG or a PDF or whatever format your particular cut driver accepts. All right, hopefully that answers the question. So I'm going to head over to the heat press to talk more about this sample that's been pre-cut. Of course, you understand the concept now where um, we've cut the full layer on layer designs. And let's go close up over here right away so I can lay this out and show you. So you can see I have my full foreground layer of fashion film in this case, and I have a full background layer. This is very typical. You cut full layers and layer these. Fashion film is fairly thin. It's about 88 microns. So it doesn't feel um, that bad when you put it full layer on layer. I'll show you ways to make it feel lighter later in this tutorial, but let's start with the basics. So I'm going to take the full background layer. I'm going to position it onto my garment. And one of the first keys when you're doing two color graphics 
is you want to limit the amount of time that this bottom layer, the background, is underneath the heat. Basically, when the film and the t-shirt has heat applied to it for a long period of time, although you can't really see it too much, it starts to shrink uh, very slightly, and that's going to cause issues. So, rule number one or tip number one when doing multicolor graphics is you just want to tack the background layer for a short time. In the case of fashion film, it's two seconds um, that I just need to tack that for, and then I can peel the carrier away. And basically, by just getting it to temporarily hold with the adhesive to the garment, it prevents me from having to uh, have issues with lining up. And so, know that this wouldn't be durable in the wash, but I just tack that background layer, and then that will allow me to take my foreground layer and perfectly position it. Now, a couple things here. You can see that the position and the placement is perfect on this. That's because that bottom layer didn't shrink. If I would have applied that bottom layer for a full application that Fashion Film takes, which is 15 seconds, it would have shrank, and basically that would cause major issues. And I've been in many shops where they're trimming apart individual letters on the foreground and trying to line them up because it doesn't line up on this side versus this side. Typically, that's because the material shrunk in the application. You didn't necessarily do anything wrong when it came to the, the actual setting up of the artwork. Okay, so that's the fundamentals. Now, something else I want to point out before I apply, you notice how we have a very clear carrier here. Um, when you're layering materials as you're shopping for a heat transfer film brand, it's going to make your layering life easier if you look for something with a crystal clear carrier that you can see through. When you start to get a frosted carrier, it's very difficult to see through that to make sure everything's in perfect registration because it is all eyeballed as far as lining it up. I'm going to use a cover sheet, although it's not 100% necessary when you're layering, it's just a good practice because that will, if you happen to have any material that's exposed from your background layers to the heater, it will prevent it from sticking to it, so I always recommend a cover sheet. And now, I'm going to complete the full application. This is just a simple two-color design, so now the background and the foreground are getting the full 320 degrees for 15 second application. Be able to open that up. One of my favorite things about fashion film as well, uh, when layering materials, I love to have a hot peel because that allows you to peel the backing right away, which speeds things up in the application process, especially when you're working with applying background layers. Imagine if I had to wait for that to cool before I could align the foreground layer, there would be a lot of issues. So that's one example. That's basically layering 101. Uh, tack your background layers, look for a material with a crystal clear carrier that's easy to align, and make sure at some point in the process that everything that's been applied to the shirt receives its full application for time, temperature, and pressure. Now, I want to review that process one more time in the context of a different design. And so I'm going to load this shirt for you. Uh, we'll start to get a little more stylish um, on the graphics and maybe throughout the class you can pick up some concepts there as well. Um, we're going to load this garment from Pennant Sportswear. We're going to start with a preheat and we're going to do fashion film once again. And I'm going to give you a tip here. So here's our design. It's been cut uh, completely in two layers. You can see I just kind of stick things together. Just make sure the sticky doesn't hit the sticky because that will absolutely ruin your graphic. Um, when it comes to what do I press first, I usually like to start with the largest piece or the bounding box, the sort of outside edge of the design, because if I try to lay this pink piece in here, lining it up in context of when the silver piece comes on is going to cause me some, some issues. I'm not 100% confident. So another general tip with layering is start with your outside edge, because that will allow me to get a good placement distance uh, down from my collar. And uh, from a placement standpoint, there's a ton of tutorial videos on Stalls TV that teach you that as well. Now keep in mind, I'm just tacking this down for a couple seconds, peeling away the backing, and then of course, 
The other reason that I had to press this layer down first on this is because there's a direct overlapping foreground piece where that dancer is going to go right on top of the silver tack. So while it's a multicolor design, the only part that's direct layered is right here where the dancer is going over top of the Lansy Academy. This is a perfect example where I have some material exposed to the heater, so that cover sheet becomes uh, critical and I do the full application. So when you start to talk about layering and what do you charge for it, like with screen printing when you add a second color, you're adding um, another cost of a screen. The same thing is true with cutting heat transfer films. When you start to add additional colors, you are really, um, I don't want to say duplicating your total cost, but you're definitely duplicating your heat transfer film costs and for the most part um, you're duplicating your labor costs for weeding and application. Um, so while we still only have one cost of one shirt, as you start to add additional colors, you want to make sure that um, you charge more. Um, this is going to be extremely durable when it's heat applied. Um, you're going to get the same durability that you would out of a one color uh, design. So that should give you um, the basic fundamentals for layering. Um, as you can see, it's a nice look on this garment. I love this style garment from Pennant Sportswear. Um, any additional questions right now, Karen? Going back to the cut software, does Corel Draw allow you to cut by color? So Corel Draw doesn't necessarily do the cutting itself. You're just doing the design work in Corel Draw. So in Corel Draw, when you're designing, um, you should be able to basically create, once you complete your design, two separate pages for your colors um, before you take it over to your cut driver software. Um, but if you were designing in Corel in your cut driver software, the piece that actually you click send a cutter on, that's what's going to want to have the um, color recognition to be able to separate that for you. So vector cut actually works with Corel Draw as well. You can design in Corel and then bring it into vector cut as a PLT. You just export from Corel and then you have to import into vector cut. It's not a direct connect, but it'll still recognize your colors. Does that make sense? Okay. Now. Before we leave sort of what I call layering 101, I'm going to load one more garment over on the press for you and show you um, this concept of the two second fast tack and where else it comes into play. It's, it's really one of those simple things that makes life a lot easier. And I say two seconds, but some materials require three to five seconds depending on your brand of heat transfer film you're using. So make sure that you basically understand your material and how it applies. Um, five seconds is usually safe for everything, but a lot of the hot peel materials from stalls only take two seconds. Um, the point on this one, as I start to line up my graphic, you notice you could easily want to place this like this if you didn't design it, um, but I know it goes at a little bit of an angle. Um, a quick visual I like to do on my first shirt if I were doing a dozen of these is sort of just hold the second color above to get a visual to make sure that's the angle and everything I want it at and I'm good so I'll just leave that on the shirt. And the material I'm pressing now is called Fashion Film Electric so I'm going to give that the fast tack as well. And then the real tip I wanted to give you is when I go to line up my second color. Now while these aren't directly layered, it's still a multicolor graphic, and the issue that I'm having here is, I think you can see that on the camera, the mylar carrier is actually cutting through or overlapping my background layer because it's a smaller component going inside. So this is very common on multicolor graphics, you'll get this. Now there's a way, you could press this and give it the full application with the cover sheet, it'd be fine, it would be durable, but I would see creases from the mylar carrier in the edges, anywhere it's touching of the design. And basically I would end up with a finished product, and I'm not sure if we'll be able to get a close enough angle, but I'll try to show you. I would end up with a finished product where you can see the little indent in the metallic gold where the red carrier sort of impressed it. And that's the finished product. There's no getting that out. You can try to press it again, but once you give the full application, that's done, basically, and it's in there to stay. So what I like to do is use that two-second fast tack, even on foreground products where I have the mylar cutting through. So by just giving it the couple-second fast tack, 
instead of the full application, it will basically limit the indent that that's going to leave. It will only be temporary. I can just peel it off. And now I can cover the whole thing. There's hardly any indent. I know it's tough to see on camera, but it basically just leaves a very slight impression because it wasn't on there for very long. And when I complete my application, it will be a perfect quality result um, without that challenge. So that's one of the tips. Once again, I'm combining Fashion Film now with Fashion Film Electric. So I need to make sure that each of those materials um, gets their full melting point, even if I need to over apply one of them. Like, for instance, if Fashion Film Electric took 20 seconds, um, it doesn't, but if it did, I would need to make sure at some point in the process it receives a full 20 seconds on the application, even if I have to overheat the fashion film to get there. Otherwise, you never reach the melting point of that adhesive and you can have durability issues. All right, I'm going to freeze for a second for um, any questions coming in or clear. All right, so that's good. So I want to show you another tip, and this is really when you're layering, um, you know, when you break apart by colors, you can uh, send those over to the cutter as is, but there are some designs where you just feel like you're throwing so much material in the garbage that you'll want to make some design modifications. And I did a good example of that here. Um, this design, it's a two color design. Now let's go over to the heat press for a close up of it. You can see this is very, very good utilization of material. It's done in glitter flake, but this particular component of the design, you can see there's a lot of spacing and waste. Now the benefit is when I go to press this onto my shirt, um, which I'll load, I'm going to swap out this 16 by 20 attachment for my 11 by 15 attachment. Um, this is sort of just pressing 101 because I want to make sure that I have a flat surface to print on. And that 16 by 20 would not allow me to load this hooded sweatshirt and drop the pocket and get it as flat as I possibly can. So I load my 11 by 15 attachment. That's what I love about these uh, Hotronics heat presses is that they're all threadable. I can split the garment on, can load the smaller attachments uh, very easy without tools. And of course, anytime you change an attachment, you need to redial in your pressure. So while doing that, I preheated and let me press the background. Uh, glitter flake. I want to make sure you have it the right way. Glitter Flake is another one of those where I can do the quick tack just to speed things up. Give it a couple seconds. You may notice in a lot of my videos or tutorials, I, I start slow when I'm peeling just to make sure I got a full adhesion there so I'm not going to tear or rip up the design. Um, that's just something natural that I picked up so when I'm peeling, I'll start slow. Okay, I got a good release and then I'll just finish uh, ripping it the way off. It just gives me a way. If something happens to be lifting, I can just stop and repress it to see what went wrong with my pressure or whatever it may have been. Okay, so you can see the point I wanted to make on this, you can see how we've cut this so it's perfect one step alignment. So that is very easy uh, to line up. You can just place it in the right spot and be quick at the heat press, but I've lost about four inches by, let's say, eight inches in glitter material that went in the garbage by cutting it like this. Um, that equates to about 50 cents in material per transfer. I don't know about you, but I'd like to make 50 cents more per garment if I can, or at least 30 cents more per garment. So what I would recommend doing is in your design software, actually making this nested. So break apart your design, break apart your design and you can actually nest these pieces up. I don't know if you're getting a good visual there, there it is. Nest these pieces up and cut it and then you can trim apart in scissors. And what's the real difference? It's going to take you like five more seconds at the heat press to take this component, place it where it needs to be and then take the other component of the design and place it where it needs to be. So the tip is anywhere there's excess waste in space um, in lining up a color, break it apart in the design software, trim it, and manually place. I'd rather do the manual placement all day to save on cost of material. 
and of course I'm just going to give it the full application. You may say, well that mylar is overlapping the background layer of glitter. Um, just knowing glitter flake, it doesn't show indents in the product, so I don't have to worry um, about that quick, fast hack, you know, with glitter on glitter um, designs. Peel away the backing, and I have a completed result. So um, those are some of the basics with weeding. I'm going to head back over to the table. And I want to take a look just to make sure I'm hitting all my key points here. Okay, so we talked a little bit about Art 101 with creating your background layers using the contour. We've talked about tacking lower layers to prevent shrinking and to speed up the process. Um, we talked about trying to get a material or use a material with a crystal clear carrier to make alignment easy. Um, Pick a hot or warm peel material where possible to keep the process moving. And then ultimately removing the mylar marking by tacking your foreground layers anytime that mylar is overlapping uh, your background design. And then last but not least is uh, breaking apart your image and sort of ganging it nicer to save on waste uh, with our last example. I believe there's a question before I move over into some advanced concepts. Are there any durability issues if materials are pressed for too long or at too high of a temperature? So I feel like that's a bit of a loaded question. So generally, if you're in the ballpark, no, meaning 5, 10 seconds, 15, 20 degrees. But if you get to the point where you're pressing a 280 degree material at 365 and, and much more time, then it can become brittle or you can over apply it and have issues. But where there's you know, 15, 20 degree variance, 5 seconds, or so, um, I've never seen any issues. Okay, and one of the, the cool things which I'll get to in the advanced application is we give you material combination charts uh, for the heat transfer films, which will call out specific applications that have been tested uh, for 50 wash uh, and dry durability. So I'll show you that where to find that uh, towards the end of the broadcast. All right, let's switch back over to the computer if we can. And I wanna talk now, if I can zoom out of here, about layering, uh, or basically creating layered looks with materials that don't layer. Um, there's a couple reasons you could want to do this. Uh, reason number one would be is if the materials just isn't compatible, like glitter flake will not apply on top of glitter flake, you'll have durability issues. Um, or if you happen to be using a PVC based material or a heat transfer film that's not recommended for layering. Um, and secondly, often it's just to have a lighter weight feel. So just creating designs in a way because I don't want to build up layer on layer on layer and have the weight on the garment, especially where it's a soft garment or a performance garment. And I want to design in a way that it's just a single layer clear across the shirt. And so one of the simplest things that I want to show you is actually this gap outline process. When you're dealing with text, it's just a very easy way um, to create a two or even a three color look with the garment show through without having to directly layer and have that build up weight. And so the, the process for a gap outline is very simple. Um, I'm gonna break this apart by colors just to show you in CAD works here. Um, basically, I'm just creating two offsets or two contours. CAD works has a quick command that basically you select the text or the object that you wanna put a uh, small border around. You click add effect. You go to your contour folder and find gap outline and open it. And it automatically applies that for you. Change the color so you can get a visual on it here. You can make all of your modification, modifications and adjustments to it, but basically it's gonna drop that gap outline clear around your text, which is gonna allow you to cut by color and have that two color look without building up weight. Now, there's, a, there's another, I, I'll call that sort of garment gap. Uh, or gap outline where you're using the garment sort of as a barrier in between the next layer of film. Um, I want to open up another design and show you how that works in the context of a design. And so I have a garment gap sample I'm going to bring up. Um, this is the full layered example. So I'm going to zoom. This is the one that we just applied where we did the full layer of fashion film on top of the full layer of fashion film. Now if I wanted to take that same design and I wanted to do it in glitter flake, 
for some of the shirts uh, as an option, um, I wouldn't be able to do that. And the reason why is this dancer is directly layered on top of this. That's going to create a durability challenge applying glitter flake on glitter flake. And so what you can do is basically I need to create some garment gap in between there, some space between the dancer and the text. And the question is, how do you do that? Um, let me show you the finished look and what it's supposed to look like, and then I'll show you how to do it. Uh, let's see, zoom to fit. Um, this is the finished look. You can see now how there's uh, outline clear around the dancer so it fits in almost like a piece of a puzzle with a little bit of outline around it into that background design. So once you have everything designed and how you want it, um, the process is very simple. I'm going to show you on this demo sample. Basically, I would take that dancer, I'd, break, I'd have to break apart my design if it was reading all as one layer with pink. I would break it apart in whatever design software you're using. In CAD works, it's just break apart by regions under the shaping command. Um, and then I would select the component that I basically need to punch through. In this case, it's the dancer flying through the air there. I would double click on her. I would use that same contour fundamental that we taught you up front. In this case, I'm just going to do a small contour around. And don't get confused, I'm not building up another layer. I'm basically creating a, what I'll call a cookie cutter, for the lack of a better word, that I'm going to use to cut or punch through the background. So I created the contour. Um, I'll change the color just so you can get a visual. And that looks like a good garment gap distance that I'd like. If I want it different, I can change the offset and change it. But that looks good. I'm going to click OK. And then basically, I need to punch it through. We have a ton of tutorials on how to do this. I'm going to go through it sort of quick. I'm going to break this apart by colors, the meaning the dancer that I've just selected, because I just want that neon green layer to do the punch through. I'm going to pull her out of the way, the piece that I'm going to use later. I'm going to select my punch through piece, my cookie cutter. I'm holding control on my keyboard and selecting that purple layer, because that's what I want it to punch through. I go up to shaping, click on back minus front, and basically it punches directly through the background. I can now get rid of the neon green piece. I don't need it anymore. It served its purpose. And now I can drop her back in and it layers uh, perfectly. Of course, you want to make sure you get it positioned exactly where you want it because I'm going to cut her in registration with all the other pink pieces when I group this back together and then send it to the cutter by colors. So that's one way to do it now. Just I'm you know, kind of picky in the process, what I would do to clean this up before I send it to the cutter. I would zoom it, and then basically I would break this purple layer apart and delete these small little leftover pieces. They're visually, I'm not really going to care if they're there. And um, it's just one less thing I have to worry about lifting up when I'm weeding if it's not cut 100%. But that will give you the concept of using a uh, garment gap in the grand scope of a design. And so, you know, I use this very often when I'm creating stuff. Um, here's another good example that we'll press later. Just pulling up a random design and I'll zoom to fit. You can see same concept um, where I've used the garment gap around the dance text to punch through the background layer with a little bit of an outline because that would be done in a, a two-color glaze product that I'll apply for you in a second. Um, from a design concept, that gap outline or garment gap, whatever you want to talk, uh, call it, basically makes something that can't be layered, layerable, or keeps something that would get thick and makes it lightweight. So uh, let's head over to the heat press again and let's apply this um, love dancing design uh, that we just created, this time in uh, two color glitter flake. Go, uh, if we can zoom close over to the machine. I'm going to rotate my platen. This is 11 by 15 platen. It's sort of my favorite out of all of them. In this case, I'm going to load my polyester performance wear. It's a V-neck placement. Um, so just a side tip, I'm going to line up a little bit higher here. Start with the preheat, just to dial in my pressure. And then here's my design um, that's already been cut that I need to separate for application. 
going to take that outside edge first, position it down, tack it for just a couple seconds. Um, you're always welcome to use a cover sheet. Um, it certainly helps, especially when you're working with performance wear. I probably should have used one there. I'll tack that down. And then I'll position my design directly over and hopefully glitter's a little bit tougher to align because of how sparkly it is, especially if you're in a lot, lot of light in your um, environment where you're pressing. But you can see there's enough gap space in there. It gives me a little bit of tolerance for placement. And I can lock that down. And I understand there's a lot of questions. So let's try to answer those while we give this 15 seconds. The first one I have, um, could you quickly go over how you can prevent shrinking with a first layer of material? So the, just to cover it, to prevent shrinking of your background layer, you're just going to tack it for two to five seconds depending on the material type and how, what it needs to temporarily hold. But tack the background layer, that prevents the shrinking. All right, next question. Heat transfers versus screen printing. What is the best technique for durability? Um, equal, as long as they're quality and applied right. Can you layer fashion film on top of glitter flake? No. So you can't do anything on top of glitter flake. That's where you get the issue. You can do glitter flake on top of other films, but nothing on top of glitter flake. Can you design in CADWorks and send it to a Cricut cutting machine? Yes, I believe so. Basically, there's not a direct bridge between CADWorks and um, those sort of craft cutters. But what you can do is you can design in CADWorks and export as a file format that you can use in uh, the Cricut or a similar machine. A lot of people are actually just exporting as like a JPEG and then vectorizing it in their Silhouette software, or Cricut software, whatever it may be. So, let's see. Basically, I'm loading another shirt here because um, I want to show you that same concept with uh, the other design and glaze and it'll just help to show you another heat transfer material. Um, basically, it'll also point out some of the negatives of a particular material that may be cold peel with layering because it's going to take more time. So this is another good example of why a hot peel um, would be necessary. I'm going to load that on. I'm going to basically tack it for my background layer of glaze just for that two to five seconds. But now I need to wait till this cools completely down to peel it. So I'd have to remove it from the press in like a production environment and I'm sort of just shaking it to the side here and going to get ready to peel it. Or you can um, maybe have a cookie sheet nearby to lay on it, but it's still slightly warm, but let me give it a try. See it's lifting when it's slightly warm. I really have to wait for this to cool down. So the look's going to be awesome, but the production time is much more. So if I were doing a two color application with a cold peel, basically I'd probably press all the backgrounds and throw the shirts to the side and then come back and layer the top. So you just want to be careful when you're working with cold peel, especially as your background layers. So it's still not cool enough down on this side it is. So I'll start to peel the excess away. Now glaze, just you're probably wondering what this product is. It's a, it's a really cool product. Basically the material changes color based on the garment fabric that you're applying it to. So this is the metallic silver. Um, glaze and basically it comes to life based on how dark the garment is. You'll get a higher vibrancy of metallic where the garment's very dark and you'll get a lower vibrancy of metallic or sometimes almost an iridescent look if the garment's white. So I'll be able to position in my foreground designs. You can see I've utilized that Space Glaze is one of those materials that we don't recommend uh, for layering. So that's why I'm sort of treating it like glitter flake, where I'm giving it the space in the design and pressing it. Once again, see, same color, but I've broken it apart to save on all this material that would be waste in between the layers. Something else I've done is I have the mylar overlapping, so I probably need to tack it, as painful as it is to wait for a cold peel, it's smarter for the finish quality to tack it for um, sort of the three to five seconds. 
let it cool, and then I'll get it back on the press yet again to finish it off. So um, sometimes a material is so nice, it's worth the work, but when you're using a basic material that's a cold peel, to me it's kind of like it's time to look for a hot peel material because it's going to make your life easier if you're doing a lot of layering. And you also want to make sure that whatever hot peel material you, you choose, that it's going to be uh, consistent enough. Basically, it's going to peel hot every time, and I'm not going to have to wait um, over at the heat press. So, peeling this away. I have a semi-completed design, but remember, I have to get the whole final application with a cover sheet at the recommended time, temperature, and pressure. Now, I want to finish this up and show you a completed look. You can see a nice close-up there. You get a nice high quality, and I'll pull that off the press so we can get a nicer look of how it sort of changes and moves. So these, I mean, this product just feels awesome. It's a cool product, so you may want to consider um, using this. Although you can't layer it, it's really awesome for doing multicolor designs and getting that trendy uh, metallic effect with a material that can be soft and stretchable. Now, that's garment gap. Let's go back over to the computer, and I want to show you basically where you can get the full layer on layer look with something called trapping. And just as I'm talking here, folks, I apologize, but I am going to run a little bit over today. Probably going to finish up closer to uh, 12 o'clock, so thanks for sticking with us if you can. Otherwise, it will be recorded and posted on stallstv.com. So I'll pull back up my layering example. Delete some of these other pieces of artwork, and let's talk about trapping and what it is. So basically, when it's lined up properly, this would look, whether it's on a garment or on the computer screen, the word trap there in black and red looks like full layer on layer. But what we've done when you're dealing with materials that won't layer or you want the softer feel on the garment with the full layer on layer look, we basically set up the art in such a way that there's show through um, in the letters so you can perfectly register the text directly over top and get the full layer on layer look. Now, we've created this in such a way, it's just not as simple as this would uh, butt register and fit perfectly in there, because we know, although tacking the background layer reduces the shrinking, it doesn't completely eliminate it. And ultimately, as human beings, we need a little bit of a tolerance for placement. So on this particular example, there's actually a little bit of an overlap if we zoom in and look at the edge where the black is actually on top of the red just by like a a hairline or a sixteenth of an inch depending on the size of your design. So let me show you how to set up and sort of create trapping uh, within your design. So I'm just going to bring in some new text, make a font selection, and then I'm going to add my first background layer because I want to make this have a two color look. So I click on add effect, add a small contour, Change the color for a better visual. And basically, that's the look I'm after. But in this case, I'm going to do glitter on glitter. So I need to trap it. So first thing is, you create this. You click OK. The next step, if I can clear this out to the side, is I ultimately need to punch this through. But I can't punch this layer through because I need that bit of overlap. If I were to punch this through, it would be that simple butt register, which is going to cause me the issues. So I'm going to break this apart by colors. I just select it and break it apart because I only want to work with this foreground layer. And in order to have that slight overlap, basically I need to create this foreground layer just a little smaller. And we know that I can't make a copy and just shrink it because of what we learned in the top of the broadcast. So what I need to do is actually do a contour to the inside. So I'm going to double click on this again, click on Add Effect, I'm going to do an inside contour, which is a quick selection in CAD works. Or in Corel or Illustrator, you can do that as well. You can see how the gray is the inside contour. It's leaving a little bit of black exposed. Let's just make it 0.12, because I'd like to have a little bit more of a tolerance. Basically, that black exposed is your tolerance with lining it up. Um, 
0.12 isn't the way to punch it in every time. It will depend on the size of your design. So you're going to have to make a determination based on the visual result that it will give you. Click OK. Now, of course, this is reading as one layer, the black and the gray. It doesn't, it stays together as one layer until I break it apart. So I'm going to break those apart by colors. And now what I'm looking to do is basically grab that black layer and get it out of here for now. I'll use that later. And I want to use the gray layer, which was my inside contour, to punch through. I'm going to draw a box around this. I can do it visually, or you can make sure it's aligned to the center, um, both on the top and left to right. You saw a little adjustment there. And you remember the command where we did the cookie cutter? The same thing. I'm going to select both layers, and I'm going to do the back minus front. Boom. It punches through. Now I have basically my two components. If I move this black layer to the foreground, you'll see it fits perfectly in. You know, if I move it a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, you have a little bit of a tolerance there, but then you'll start to see it. So that is basically trapping. Now when we look at that in a context of a design, uh, let's go back over to the heat press. And we'll come in close here. And let's load a shirt on. I could load the 16 by 20 platen um, if I want. That's going to make it easier to line up this adult um, large or XL shirt. But just for speed purposes, I'm just going to leave what's on here and preheat. And then let me give you a, a visual of what we've created. So here's my background. You can see how the center, see how the center is out of it. And then here's the piece that's going to fit perfectly inside of it. So that same function was done, except within the context of this design called trapping. And so I'll start with my background layer. Same application process. Once you know these fundamentals where I'm doing a quick tack on the background layer, you really just start to roll. There's no, really no room to do anything else at the heat press um, when you're pressing this other than grab your next transfer and make sure you have it ready uh, to position down. So did the fast tack. Now I'll take my gold layer and I look to register that perfectly um, right on top, knowing that I have a little bit of a tolerance in my design. So I'm just looking sort of at all edges, um, making sure it's lined up. Obviously maroon on maroon is tougher to see, so high contrast always works better. I have some glitter directly exposed to my heater. Cover it and give both colors the full application. But that's the basics of uh, trapping and how to do that. And that the design basically fits together like a puzzle. puzzle. You use the contour to allow some tolerance and alignment. And it's very important to use the fast tack on your bottom layers of the design. So you get a nice high quality result. What kind of questions do we have? None? OK. All right, let's go back over. Let me see if I have anything here at uh, home base. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is mixed media. So let's just pull it out wide over at the heat press for a second. Assuming our uh, remote control didn't run out of batteries. There we go. Karen's doing an awesome job, by the way, controlling all these angles. So we thank her for her help. And she's the one chatting all the answers to your questions as well. Um, so let's talk about uh, mixing different materials. And so, so far, we've combined all like materials in the process. While we've showed you how to direct layer, how to create a gap outline or a garment gap, and then also how to trap as far as visual appearance and look, um, and showed you some process, it, process to make it accurate and speedy when you're pressing, we want to talk about mixed media. So a lot of people want to do mixed heat transfer film. So you want to do this glitter with this basic film, or this flock with this basic film, or uh, reflectives, or different combinations. And that's one of the most powerful things about heat transfer films is that there are so many different styles and looks that you can really create some compelling graphics and, and t-shirt designs and sell a lot by understanding how to do mixed media. And so basically, um, there's some fundamentals with mixed media. And, and we talked about them earlier, but you want to make sure when you're mixing that you hit the highest temperature for the longest time of whatever material. 
And so if we switch over to the computer, I'm going to show you where to access this material combination chart um, on stalls.com, which is going to make your life so much easier. So basically, if you go to stalls.com, that's where you can read about all the heat transfer materials, purchase them, see the colors, but also under the Help and Education tab, you'll see something right here under material charts called a material combination chart. Once I click on that, basically it's going to give me uh, a breakdown of all the stalls materials that are layerable. So what I'll have to do is select a foreground material. So let's say I wanted to apply flock on top of fashion film. Flock would be my foreground material. It has a nice velvet fuzzy texture. I just click on that in the sidebar and then I need to scroll down to find fashion film as my background. Here it is. So 320 degrees of medium pressure. I apply fashion film background for two seconds and peel it hot or warm. And then I'm going to apply flock for 12 seconds and peel it cold. So it right there it gives you the combination of these two products knowing that we've um, certified this and lab tested it. Now, there are going to be times where you don't find the application on this chart. 99% of the stuff that can be done is done there, but sometimes um, decorators sort of want to break the rules of using heat transfer films and layering, and actually we're guilty of it here too at Stalls TV and often encourage it. Um, for instance, our product testing lab does not recommend putting glitter flake on top of other films to last 50 wash cycles. They've just seen too many issues with different combinations. But Having said that, I know that Glitter Flake, I've used it successfully on thermofilm and it gives me the durability I need and the look I need. There's just some things I need to watch out for. So if you don't find it here, it doesn't mean it can't be done. It just means it's not lab certified for 50 wash durability. So with our fashion film and flock combination in mind, uh, let's go over to the heat press once more and show you how to apply this. I am going to switch out to my uh, 16 by 20 attachment because I'm going to do a couple adult size shirts. And of course with a attachment change comes a pressure change and applied pressure from the heat press. So I'm going to start and load my t-shirt on. As I'm preheating, way too light a pressure, I'm going to adjust my pressure to that medium setting that it called out. The nice thing is this machine has a digital pressure readout on the front display right here that you can't quite make out. And I dial that in until it's reading a 5 on the digital pressure readout, which means a medium pressure. So we're going to start with our background fashion film layer. This is one of those abstract designs where I need to place it a little off center and hold my foreground flock over it to make sure it's going to give me the right visual because they're a little offset. And for those of you playing along at home, you should know by now, fashion film, going to tack for a couple seconds. Just so you know, Premium Plus works like this as well if you're using that product from stalls, it just doesn't hot peel as nice. You need to wait a couple more seconds before doing the warm peel. Uh, thermofilm you can do the two second fast tack with. Um, a lot of the different products. And then I'm going to line up my design, my flock design, and it said give it the full application. Now of course that material combination chart cannot predict everything. Like it probably couldn't have predicted that I was going to design like this and my mylar was going to completely cut through my design. And so for that reason, from what we learned earlier, I know I'm not going to do the full application right now. Eventually I will, but I'm going to tack this layer as well because I'm worried about it leaving an indent there. So I'm going to give flock about, you know, that two to five seconds. On cold peel materials, I sort of go towards the five seconds, which flock is a cold peel. I'm going to cool it down. I'll be back over to the heat press. I'm just sort of holding it up against the table over here. Get ready to load it back on because I'm going to have to press it anyways. And I'll peel that carrier off. Now I'm ready to give it that full application that it called out on the material combination chart. And my memory is not too good right now. It's 12 seconds. 
still at the same 320 degrees. I press it for 12 seconds, and I have an awesome finish that's sellable. Flock, if you haven't used it before, um, it's a pretty cool product. It gives you something that feels more like fabric on the garment, where it has like a suede like texture, and there's actually dimension on this product, so it's very popular um, for fashionable t-shirts to get something that's truly soft. And it's a great product to know about for mixed media. You see it on a lot of screen printed shirts at retail where they add flock accents in addition to rhinestone studs, etc. So just to show you how to break the rules, since I'm good at that, now I'm going to do the same thing, same design, but with thermofilm and glitter flake. Because I want to show you one last thing to watch out for before we conclude today's presentation and take your questions. I'm going to preheat. Now instead of um, fashion film, we're doing the background layer in thermofilm. So I want to show you that that one can fast hack as well. So basically just give it your few seconds. Hot peel the carrier. Thermofilm I like, I chose it for this tone on tone look because it has a little bit more um, higher gloss finish. Um, so I think it stands off of the matte uh, sort of sheen of the t-shirt a little better. And then I'm going to press glitter flake on top of it. Now, one of the problems with putting glitter flake on top of other films is that it's tough to see on the camera, but if you've used glitter before, you know there's little sparkles of glitter left over on the carrier. Those will transfer um, to the background layer, and it will be permanent if you give it the full application. But once again, I can fix a heck of a lot, not only the fact that it's overlapping here, but I can fix the sparkles transferring over by just giving it a couple second fast tack and really reducing the time that it's underneath the heat. So now I don't get the sparkles transferring. They stay with the carrier. And visually, I think I got one sparkle out of all of them that were on the carrier that transferred. So it allows me to create a higher quality finish. Of course, I always want to make sure I give it the full application. In this case, thermofilm can technically press it 330 degrees for 8 seconds, but glitter takes 330 degrees for 10 seconds. So I need to make sure I hit the 10 seconds for the glitter, and I'm not worried about thermofilm getting the extra 4 seconds. All right, so hopefully um, that gave you some, some concepts and some uh, different things for layering. The goal here was to give you the basic principles that can be applied to any job, tips for achieving accurate registration. Uh, we talked about that with quick tax and clear carriers, um, layering challenges and what to watch out for. We talked through some of that and really how to cost effectively create layered designs. And we talked about that as far as nesting your, your layers and, and finding a software that can separate by color. Um, that's all I have for today, but I want to make sure I stick on and take questions. So if you're, if you're done with today's class, uh, no big deal. Log out and please fill out the survey at the end. Even though we went a little over, we would value that. And for those of you that have questions, I'm going to stick around for another five minutes or so. Which method of layering is best if you're using foil? Yeah, foil, that's a good question. Um, I assume CAD cut adhesive with foil since that's one of the, the newer products that we've launched. Basically, the foil needs to go down first. Um, that's key because you never know how foil is going to react with everything else that's been put on the garment. Sometimes the foil will come off on the thermofilm that's already been applied. So when you're wanting to use foil, basically you need to complete your foil application first. And it's going to be extremely difficult to maintain the high shine of the foil. You're going to get a little bit more of the, um, it's still going to be, you know, shiny, but you're going to get a little bit more of the dulled down foil finish like you would when you heat it a second time or run it through a dryer because in your foreground layers, of course, it's going to be heated another time. Will flock hold up as well as fashion film? Yeah, flock is, is tremendously durable. 50 wash cycles, wash dry, uh, no problem. Side tip, it's also great for indoor sports because it doesn't catch the floor when the athletes are sliding around playing volleyball, soccer, whatever it may be. All right, I think that's all the questions today. So I want to thank you for attending Stalls TV. If you have specific questions 
about layering, I want to encourage you to go over to the Stalls TV forum, which I've brought up for you here on the uh, computer screen. Um, the Stalls TV forum is right here in the top navigation of the website. All you need to do is click on it, and this is your community. And we check this regularly, so just ask, ask away, and one of our experts will be on to answer. Thanks for watching Stalls TV.